Golf Channel host and anchor Chantel McCabe with us now who covers this. It feels like there's a big part of this story we don't yet understand. What do you think it is? Yeah, well, I was laying out all of the things that have gone on just since the beginning of February. That first week of February is when the Saudi International took place. That's the last time that Phil Mickelson played any golf internationally. He's not played on the PGA Tour since the Farmers Insurance Open the week before that. So there has been a lot just in the month of February. And we've heard rumors in the golf world for a long time, up to at least three years, as far back as I can remember, of some of this stuff kind of heating up under the surface. There were rumors that kind of intensified and then back down. And then last fall, things started to get a little bit more detailed. You'd hear players talk about it a lot more. A lot of media was covering this in an elevated capacity. And then I swear to goodness, as soon as February hit, this whole thing boiled over in part because a lot of the top 50 players in the world were over playing in the Saudi International, which became an Asian tour event. Now there's a lot of complicated parts of this puzzle. So forgive me if there are things that might be different Difficult to understand because myself, I had to go back and write an entire timeline of just what's happening. Yeah, no, in the I guess last there, there's, there, there's the idea of the Saudi Golf League that they were going to sort of buy off the top players and promise them hundreds of millions of dollars to leave the PGA. Mickelson calls the PGA a dictatorship, and we go downhill from there. I guess the the idea that he sort of said these things and has this precipitous fall from grace. He's had other issues with gambling and other things. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if there's there's something else going on with Mickelson other than just he decided to get in bed with the Saudis and that didn't work out so well. Well, there's certainly a couple angles that people are claiming could play a part in this. And some of that is because of the media rights, which are things that he himself brought up in that Saudi international press conference that he held. Because going back to the comments and how complicated this whole thing gets, if you are not following along every single hour of the day, you're going to miss something. So I had to set that up as far as how detailed this is just in the golf world. And if you're sitting kind of on the outside looking in, it's puzzling. But getting back to your point about where this kind of might actually have some legs, I would say, with the PGA Tour, which is separate from the PGA of America. He did win the PGA of America's championship at Kiowa last year, becoming the oldest major champion. And that is very relevant because he has a say in the voice of the game. Now, he expressed some frustration with the PGA Tour, and he claimed in his interview with Alan Shipnuck, whether you want to call that an interview, whether you want to call that off the record, I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody truly knows other than Alan and Phil Mickelson. And that is the typical he said, she said situation. But ultimately, we do know what he said on the record at the Saudi International. And he was not happy with what the PGA Tour was doing with their media rights, which I think if you look at all sports, there are a lot of restrictions when it comes to sports media and what you yeah. can record, what can be distributed uh, uh, on social media. Where, but where, in addition, what happens, there's a lot on. of stuff happening yeah. with money and who is getting paid and whether the top players in the world are getting their fair share of what the media rights are charging for and things beyond that when it comes to sponsors. No, you, you see this, in, look, in every sport, right? The, the, the MLB lockout right now is over over whether or not players are getting the right the right percentage or the right cut of the TV rights. Uh, Mickelson on the PGA Tour, the tour likes to pretend it's a democracy, but really it's a dictatorship. I'm interested in the fan reaction to this. Phil Mickelson, probably my favorite golfer uh, of all time. Uh, you think about there was a tennis star who said she had to take time off because of stress and may or may not have said some things. You had a, an Olympic gymnast who said she was too stressed and had issues and had to back out. Both of them got sort of overwhelming support by the fan bases of their respective sports. Is that going to happen to Mickelson? I mean, time will tell. Time heals a lot of things. We were 44 days away from the first major championship of the year at Augusta National Golf Club, which is where Phil Mickelson himself has won a multiple green jackets. So who knows if he's going to take time away from golf. He wasn't entirely clear in his apology. And one thing that you pointed out, which I think is getting lost in a lot of the conversation, the players don't have a union like you see in most other professional That's golf. That's a good point or uh, professional sports for that matter. And so today there was actually a meeting, all hands on deck meeting, all players mandatory meeting uh, at the Honda Classic here in Florida to discuss some of the things going on. Mm. And you have to know that those things were going to be addressed. Now, as far as a fan reaction, people love this guy. <laughs> He's one yeah, no, who, 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 who doesn't, love, hey, who doesn't love, love him and love to watch him play? And at least by all accounts, a pretty good guy. Chantel, you said the most important thing, 45 days till Masters week. It's reason to smile enough. Good to see you.
You too. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.